I'm really grateful to be here. Thank you so much, organizers, for having me. We're going to uh, shift gears a little bit because the session is AI and other tools. And I'm going to pick up on the other tools because uh, Lisa kind of took all of what I had to say on the AI bit and the generative AI. And for not repeating most of it, we'll look at um, um, in two sections. I'm going to um, pivot some of our discussion now on why uh, or how um, digital health offers opportunities for giving better user experience and how that could perhaps be a contributor to vaccine acceptance. And I'm going to take on the uh, story of India's COVID-19 vaccine journey from that. And then we've been working on a, um, evidence and gap map uh, on tools for infodemic management I've just extracted what we've done on uh, use of AI for infodemic management with a specific role of them in vaccine confidence. So India is a fairly big country. Most of you know that we are very populous and therefore to ensure that um, all of the people are equitably and inclusively given an opportunity to have the COVID-19 vaccine, we really needed to rely on technology. And because our information systems were not as mature as in many other parts of the world, we needed to have a single source of truth that would ensure equitable distribution as well as understand how uh, the vaccine dis distribution and the uptake is happening. And it needed to be deployed at scale, and we needed to have an engaging tool for feedback and analysis. So from a citizen's perspective, it needed to have ability for every citizen to be able to use different modalities of registering themselves. And people who do not did not have access to digital tools had the opportunity to um, use call centers or assisted by frontline healthcare workers to have their registration done. And um, what matters is that ensuring that they have the opportunity to choose where and when and how they would like to get vaccination and including the choice of the two vaccines that were available in the country. And um, it has to be a, extremely non-intrusive in terms of uh, how we can minimize the amount of data that is required. And there were a number of um, identification tools, government issued identification tools that could be used for registering themselves on the vaccine platform. So it was very simple and we had to use or the vaccination department worked with the national um, behavioral insights or the nudge unit they tested different modalities and one of the things that uh, came up was that people are very very used to an otp concept a one-time password that comes on a, an sms and if we simulate that environment for vaccination registration it will bring in an element of trust as well as credibility and therefore, this was one of the modality that was used. All that was needed was a phone number and they would get the OTP on that and then um, they could register. And like I mentioned earlier, um, there was uh, all the vaccination centers in that particular locality that they were in, that was kind of geofenced or geotagged, was available. But if they were traveling and, or for example, if they were in some other location, they had the flexibility of searching that by the pin um, and to be able to, again, choose a vaccine slot that worked for them and um, they could choose the vaccine of their choice. Uh, in term, terms of um, each family could register up to four individuals and they could check and download the certificate. So one of the things that, again, the Behavioral Science Unit told the uh, universal immunization program or the COVID vaccine in immunization unit uh, was that you need to give a feel of here and now, a tangible um, measure of the having delivered the vaccine. And that was 
uh, in the form of this digital vaccine certificate and an SMS that went out. So mm, the, they, they noticed that in, in the trial runs, they noticed that the people uh, who received this uh, vaccination certificate were the ones who were very promptly and proactively advocating for um, and nudging others to go for their vaccination. It was monitored through the WhatsApp cha channels and it was not a formal study, therefore I don't have results, but the Behavioral Science Unit told us that this was what was happening. Um, again, this is um, common for all of us who are working in a vaccination, so I'll just skip this. Uh, but in terms of the advantages for the managers, there were a number of tools that were available for the vaccinators to be able to manage the stock and publish the vaccine schedules and uh, verification of the individuals who showed up for the vaccination along with their um, ID cards and uh, real-time dashboards. And one thing that I, I would want to uh, focus on here is the ability to do the tracking for AEFI because that was a huge concern. These were two uh, predominantly India-led vaccines and the narrative in the uh, press and in social media was that these were not adequately tested and therefore you're going to have a lot of uh, vaccine related adverse events and therefore having a real time tracking of that and putting it out on a public dashboard as to what was happening um, as well as the geographical cover was important in terms of building that confidence and not to say uh, the number speaks for itself how a simple uh, digital platform was able to really drive the need and the demand for uptake of COVID-19 vaccines. I'll now shift gears and move into the evidence gap map work that we've been doing. And this was sponsored by uh, WHO. And we were undertaking a systematic review as well as a evidence map of the studies on infodemic management and we identified that among uh, the, the 983 odd studies that were out there in our uh, evidence analysis, about f close to 50%, 430 of them were on the uh, use of artificial intelligence for infodemic management. So, in specific, uh, machine learning techniques provide unique opportunities for combating disinformation using algorithms to detect uh, misinformation, disinformation before they are amplified and can uh, impact health outcomes. And as you can see, uh, most of the studies, this was done during the period of from January 2020 to uh, October of last year, 22. So we have missed some of the LLM studies in our review, uh, but most of the studies were reporting the model development and testing of that and social network analysis, followed by sentiment and analysis and a few on model uh, comparison and training and predictive and Bayesian analysis. So specifically going on to the role of AI studies from our evidence synthesis on the vaccine behavior, uh, sentiment and analysis and text-based mining of Twitter post seems to be the most commonly reported studies. And we heard a lot of this uh, essay from Lisa Stock. And um, so in particular, the methods that are being used or reported is sentiment analysis, NLP, content analysis, predictive modeling, topic modeling, um, in vaccine behavior studies in the infodemic management context. A few studies uh, are also listed here in terms of uh, how ML methods, uh, so SMV and NAVE base to classify sentiments and opinions expressed in Twitter. Again, Lisa gave us a whole list of these yesterday, so I'm not repeating that. Um, and textually, um, textual data and topic modeling around that um, from Reddit communities also focusing on COVID vaccine word the commonly reported studies. Uh, in terms of interventions for vaccine behavior, um, the studies to understand the spread of info infodemic, the relationship between fake news and uh, vaccine behavior, 
and determinants of vaccine behavior were the commonly seen in our evidence gap map. Uh, in terms of uh, interventions um, for hesitancy and behavior were effect of am animated story-based videos, infographic to counter uh, fake news or uh, false um, narratives, social media messages like we heard in our earlier talks, and specific per persuasive messages for vaccine safety, uh, media and counseling interventions. So um, I'll just go into the specific aspects of what we found in our evidence gap map. So we looked at model and developing studies and here um, it was about the various techniques that were being described um, and NLP and uh, specifically uh, in this particular study that we have put out here, the a framework with spatial and temporal features for classification of uh, the fake news uh, using LSTM, neural networks and effectiveness of the model um, in terms of accuracy and F1. Um, when, in came, when it comes to model comparison and testing, um, it was about the various um, models and techniques to identify relative strengths and weaknesses. And uh, this particular study was to um, assess the effectiveness of various machine learning techniques and algorithms in detecting, extracting fake news and evaluating met metrics, including precis precision, recall, and F1 score and accuracy. So this, is, this was the next most po popular um, number of studies that were reported under social network analysis. Uh, Tina, after this talk, uh, in her next uh, talk, is going to dwell into the framework of the social network analysis and content analysis. Um, here again, we had a few studies. Uh, sentimental analysis was uh, also commonly seen. And here... Uh, particularly, again, um, Lisa dealt a lot with the, about this in terms of the key words such as post-vaccine symptoms, the side effects and hoax and conspiracy and how they relate to um, the whole of the uh, infodemic uh, and how that propagates the misinformation around vaccines and vaccine safety. Uh, whereas the positive words were vaccine disclosure, efficacy, uh, clinical trials and approvals, affordability, regulation, distribution and shortages, travel, appointment scheduling, vaccination site, advocacy, and opinion leaders and endorsement, and gratitude towards health worker um, in, in, from this particular study. Again, uh, based on historical data, predictive modeling can also be used, and this uh, helps in predicting the spread of misinformation and it also helps to identify the, um, how a particular um, trajectory of a misinformation campaign can go. I'll skip this. And um, in summary, um, what is the role of AI in vaccine confidence? So AI can monitor and analyze online content to identify and flag potential sources of misinformation uh, on vaccines. AI-driven fact-checking tools can automatically verify claims and statements against reliable sources. AI can be used to del deliver and sorry, develop and deliver targeted public health messages from two people who are at most most at risk, so vulnerable populations, and who are the ones who are propagating or likely to share misinformation. Again, um, AI can be used for looking at large data sets of information about misinformation. And this is where uh, there was a previous comment about how do we really look at chat GP generated misinformation and can we use similar techniques to be able to pick that up and counter that. And there have been several studies on the inoculation of uh, against misinformation, particularly to uh, improve uh, the vaccine acceptance. And so... Uh, this field is evolving by the day. There is um, a body of evidence that is emerging, yet there's so much more that needs to be done. Again, last but not the least, 
uh, this is highly unregulated at the moment. Um, if there is um, no, f if there are no frameworks for AI regulation, particularly on the trust aspect of it, um, it could really go rogue, and all of our efforts in public health could be going down the drain. And therefore, um, perhaps. Um, as public health professionals who are particularly interested in ensuring appropriate vaccine coverage, uptake of vaccine and vaccine confidence, we probably need to work alongside with the people who are working on the trust-based regulations for uh, AI and the emerging um, technologies for as applicable to public health. AI is very sexy, but at the end of the day, it is people who are on the ground who are your trust agents. And therefore, we have to give technology its due, but not forget that the most trusted source of information on the ground that will drive uh, vaccine uptake, confidence in vaccines, are our frontline health workers. And let us probably not lose sight of that. Thank you.